Okay, guys, I got this really nice stay from Todd and Carrie Howell out in Kentucky. It looks nice and straight. Got a little undulation to it. It's really thick and thick and wide, which is really nice. So the first thing we're going to do, it's been sitting for about two years. So first thing I'm going to do is just clean it up, take the bark, the sapwood off, and flatten the bottom and see what I got. It looks great, but we'll uh, shave it down and see how it's actually responding. One of the things I like to do first is get the bottom nice and flat. Before I try to take that bark off. Bark should come off pretty easily, but you know, just trying to make my life a little easier. last words here. Alright, so I'm going to have to... So one problem with this stave press is that sometimes you got to put something in there to block it. script kind of comes in handy. There we go. Draw a knife. Just gonna get the bottom nice. Oh, there's that yellow. Nice and flat. It's got a little snake to it. should be wearing goggles for this. But. Anyway, I'm going to flatten that out. You get the idea. Then I'll come back to take the bark off and then I'll show you what we got left over. Alright, just some things to watch out for when you are bringing down a new stave. You see how the yellow, the, the dark color goes underneath the yellow here? Okay, so that means there's a crack in the bow there. Crack in the bow stave. And if you look at the side, the crack extends oh, about half an inch down. Now, I don't think that's going to be a problem, but you see there's a line here, here, and one that goes up and around here. Now, hopefully those aren't all cracks, or this bow is going to, this stave is going to pretty much be no good. But I have a feeling it's you got one there, one there. So I may have to take this bow down really far on the bottom end. But we'll see how it turns out after we keep shaving. Just something I wanted to show you guys. I'm not even worried about growth rings yet until I know what I have to work with. All right, we'll come back in a minute. Okay, well, as you can see, I'm losing quite a bit of the bow here. And that crack still isn't gone. At this rate, I think we're still going to have enough. But what was a incredibly wide stave is going to be reduced dramatically by the time I'm done here. And uh, that's okay though. I'm still excited about it. The snake is gone for the most part. But you can see how much wood. I mean it's a good, not enough for another stave, but definitely quite a bit of wood going away here. Anyway, just a little update. We'll keep going. Back in a bit. Sometimes you just got to get out the uh, the old hatchet. See if I can do this without killing myself.
And that's how we make a mess. Okay, okay, so we're going to break now. And this is where I ended up. Here's the stave. Looks nice, bright yellow now. A lot different. It's actually a very nice stave. And uh, it's a lot smaller than it was when I started, but there is still plenty of meat on the bone, shall we say. It's still a very large stave. Just, I don't think this one would have been a good idea to split into more than one. It's pretty straight, but you can see down at the end there, I think you can see, I can see it, but hopefully you can see there's a big, it's like perfectly, I'm going to twist this the wrong way and it's not going to work, but I don't know, can you see that way it sort of upswings down at the end? So we're going to have to untwist this stave a little bit. That's the one thing I didn't notice before. And the other thing is we've got quite a few bug holes. Nothing I'm concerned about. I think I actually kind of like having bug holes. I don't think they make that much of a difference. Uh, you can either just go beneath them or I don't think they are that terrible to the integrity of the bow. Um, I don't think they're a big deal unless there's so many that they just have eaten it all away, in which case you shouldn't have even started. But uh, I don't think they're a big deal. So I'm, I'm very excited about this. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to cut the ends off. you got a big old like, knot growing right there. But I'm going to cut the end off this bow and just get a look at the uh, what the growth rings look like so I have an idea. You can see there isn't a lot of sapwood on this bow. But I'm curious, I, it looks like we've got a lot of layers, so I'm guessing that the, uh, the rings are going to be pretty small. Anyway, I'm going to cut that off and then I'll give you a look at the growth rings. Okay, well, that's kind of unusual. Uh, huh. You can see they kind of swoop there. Anyhow, hopefully that will change... Hopefully that's not going to be consistent the entire way down the bow. So instead of just trying to pick a growth ring here, I'm probably just going to start scraping and uh, using the draw knife. And I'll use a scraper on here. And I'm, instead of trying to figure out which growth ring, I may just scrape and the first one I can clear is the one I'm going to use. I won't use the sapwood, but once I get past the sapwood, the first one that clears cleanly for me is going to be the big winner. Instead of trying to go, oh yeah, I want this one, even though that's probably the right one to go with, I'm not going to go do that. I'm just going to start scraping and draw knifing, and then when I'm done, it'll be the first one I can do cleanly. Huh. All right, well, there you go. Surprises. See, that's why you got to do this sort of thing. Wood always holds surprises for you. Mike from Boyer Bows.